the Sacramento Mountains, New Mexico. Adam and Jamie meet one of the observatory's top docs, Russet McMillan. How can I help you today? Well, it seems that there are some people that do not believe that man has actually been to the moon. I've met some of them. What do you think? I think they're crazy. A bold statement, but Dr. McMillan has the hardware to back it up. Here's the thing. This little laser pointer is about 10 milliwatts. That's great, but it's not going to make it to the moon and back. That thing, however, peaks at one gigawatt. That's 100 billion times more powerful than this is. That's what you got to have to make it to the moon and back. This is actually not a bad imitation of exactly what's on the moon that we're shining the laser into. In fact, the specific one we're shining into was left there by the Apollo 15 crew. Now, we're firing on the order of 200 quadrillion photons per laser pulse at that reflector, and we're getting between one and three photons back per pulse if we're lucky. When we get that photon back, we'll see a spike like that on the screen. I am slewing the telescope to the lunar highlands. Slew away. Test number one, shining our laser at a portion of the moon's surface devoid of all man-made objects, including retroreflectors, known to locals as the lunar highlands. There's the moon. You can see the craters. Wow. With the laser pointed at a random location on the moon's surface. Initiating laser. Dr. McMillan pulses 200 quadrillion photons into the night sky. So we're shining the laser on the lunar highlands now, and we're getting nothing back except background light. As expected, the lunar regolith, with its reflectivity index, or albedo, of approximately 8%, simply scatters the beam, and the sensors back here at the observatory detect no reflected light. Now I'm going to move to Apollo 15. <laughs> Apollo 15, crewed by Scott, Irwin, and Warden, set down at the base of the lunar Apennine Mountains which is where they placed the retro reflector. Wow. That's the location where Apollo 15 landed on the moon. That is so cool. Initiating laser on retro reflector from Apollo 15. And there's a spike beginning to stand out. Is that it? That's the return from Apollo 15. Light returning from the laser retro reflector at exactly the wavelength and distance that we were expecting. <laughs> that is so cool. I know you do this like a hundred times a year, but it's really thrilling to watch it happen in, in right in front of us. Not just thrilling, but conclusive. Look, I'd love to go to the moon, but I can't. At least not right now. So we did the next best thing. We shined that laser at the moon on the second test, and we got a clear spike back. Photons came back to our receptor. Now the only way that that could happen is if there was a piece of man-made equipment up on the moon to reflect them back. So get over it. There's no conspiracy here. We've been there. We've done that. So the team have busted everything before them. What's that, Neil? We really went to the moon. And compounded those five results with evidence of lunar-bound man-made equipment. This moon mystery jigsaw puzzle is complete. A lot of people ask us when we're going to run out of myths, and the fact is we haven't run out yet, and it's thanks to viewers like you that are logging on to discovery.com slash mythbusters and posting your ideas. So if you've got some, post them. We might just use them.